Hey everybody, welcome back to Goodell Farm. I'm Peter. Uh, hey, we got some good uh, holiday spirit snow here. Um, always good to, good to have snow around the holidays. Uh, personally, I could do without it after uh, after the holidays. Just, uh, but anyway, thanks for tuning in. Uh, quick video today. Glad you're with me. All right, let's let these guys out. All right, come out, come out wherever you are. We got Chestnut leading the way. He's the rooster. You gonna come out? You don't know what to make of this white stuff. Let me get out of the way in case you're worried about that. All right, um, we're gonna look inside through the door, see what we got going on here. Come on, everything's okay. You'll be fine. Hey ladies, Chestnut, you gotta go out that other door. This one's just, uh, if we're gonna do a temporary look-see. Yeah, we don't have any eggs yet. Um, I think it's a combination of the cold weather, winter time, and um, with that, not having a, uh, I don't know, a, a, you know, minerals and nutrition that they get off of eating grass, etc. I think it's a combination of nutrition and the time of year and, and temperature. But as you can see, they've uh, made a good home out of the uh, inside of the uh, hen house here. Um, right now we have uh, pine shavings down. We got some straw that we'll put in also uh, once, once this gets cleaned out. But... Uh, they don't normally jump outside this time in the morning. It's, uh, I don't know, 7.30, 8 o'clock. And uh, I think it's because of the snow and their curiosity with this door open. They're like, hey, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do. So I'm going to shut this door and maybe we'll, we'll go out that little hen door over there. So what we have inside here, their little run area, as you can see, you know, where the roofing is, you know, protects them from the rain and snow, which is good. I'm happy with that design. Uh, put a little uh, kind of ladder area for them to roost on. They like they don't like to stay on the ground much. They like to be off the ground. I have this wooden. It's a it's a cedar uh, branch uh, that I have. I, had, I screwed it into the wall there, and they they climb up there every now and then. Uh, have an old uh, I don't know old desk piece of furniture thing that I was gonna throw out, and they go up on here too. I put a little walkway for them and uh, and here we are back again so uh, that's their uh, their playground all right it's Christmas Eve snow is falling always good to get seasonal snow they say it's not gonna last long but good to have it put you in the holiday spirit if if it helps and uh, we gotta do a little bit of snow removal, even though it's gonna melt. Um, I wanna clear that out so that we don't slip and fall. Yeah, so when it comes to snow removal, I mean, there's many options. I, I personally have uh, a snow blower for heavy duty snow. I use the back of my tractor sometimes for uh, cleanup. Uh, and then, yeah, of course you have the traditional snow shovel. So uh, today it's a snow shovel kind of uh, snow just probably two three inches not that much very very light and when it comes to snow shovels one might think nah snow shovels a snow shovel right but i have a different variety i use for different reasons like um while this guy here is not necessarily a snow shovel i use that a lot to get big chunks of snow out or big piles so you know it's I call this a coal shovel because it has that big, uh, I'll call it a basket or, you know, the, the big shovel uh, blade to to do a big bulky stuff. And then uh, you have a, a traditional, uh, I'll call it the flathead shovel with a solid straight handle. Uh, this one, um, traditional shovel. Uh, it's all utility, I would say. You know, I use that uh, if it's handy. Uh, this kind with the scoop, I like this when the snow is light and you want to clear a lot of snow at once 
and you could push it and then the barrel will actually push the snow in front in effect so that you could just kind of plow it into the side. And then lastly, we have these with this curved handle. Um, and these are good. It really saves on the back, on your back. If you're shoveling and you have to lift the snow, the way these handles are designed is that it's less bending on the back, less strain on the back. So um, I use these occasionally. I personally don't like that bent handle because it's just a pain to kind of deal with. So uh, today I think I'll use this yellow one here because... Uh, We'll do a, uh, a good job quickly, and uh, we'll be on our way. Now, here is a couple snow shoveling tips for you rookies out there. People who don't sh shovel snow a lot, or maybe just good reminders. A couple things I'd like to keep in mind. So, this driveway I have here goes uphill. And um, it's always easier or safer when you're shoveling uphill. Although the attraction is to push snow downhill you want to be careful because it's more likely you're going to slip and fall when you're going down I mean, you think about it you ever hear of anybody falling up stairs actually i think biden did that didn't he but anyway and a second tip i have is it's supposed to get warmer later snow supposed to the sun is supposed to come out so when i push the snow I push it where the sun is going to hit. Uh, the sun is behind me, uh, south facing. So um, it will be coming up over this garage area here. So this section is always shaded. So if I could get it out of there, it will get heated up by the sun if it's over this way and melt. If I left it over here, it's going to be there till like March. So that's what I always try to do is push it out of the way, push it where the sun is going to shine. And then also think about the future. If you're going to create a pile and you just keep adding to that pile, one snowstorm after another, it's going to get pretty uh, substantial. So um, think about where you're going to put the snow. And a couple other tips that I've come to find out over my years is I personally think the best time to take care of your snow is just when the storm is about to end or just when it finishes and passes over your location. And the main reason for that is that's when likely the snow's at the fluffiest point. It hasn't melted yet. It's easy to move. And generally the wind, it will be calmer once a storm passes. What happens a lot here in New England is we'll get a snowstorm and then it's followed by a little bit of a warmer front and you'll get rain or sleet on top of that snow. So you want to get that snow up and out of there while it's nice and light. Because once that rain or that heavier stuff gets on top of it, ah man, just makes the job a little bit tougher. The other part of timing is if you can get rid of that snow before nightfall, especially if it snows during the early morning, and it kind of melts during the day, try to get it done before nightfall. Because when nightfall comes, that's just going to get hardened up. And uh, nothing worse than that hardened crust. Try to get that out of the, out of the snow blow or just kind of, it's just heavier. And when it comes to cars, I like to use a broom. So I use this big heavy broom here to push all the snow, the, get the bulk of it off with the broom. And what I try to do is I push it to the side that it's easier to clear from. So you can see here, 
if I push it on this side here, I got a long distance to push that snow. So here on this car, I push it on this side here. And with all the snow on this side, I just got a shorter distance to flip it over onto the grass. And here's an important thing, two points. One is always clear out right here by the windshield where your wiper blades are. Make sure that is like so clean you could eat off of it because this freezes easily. And chunks of ice, when they get in between your wiper arms or your wiper blades, your wiper blades get stuck to the roof. If you start your car and your wipers are on or mistakenly you put them on, forget about it. You're talking you're going to need new wipers, probably a new wiper motor. You see a lot of repairs related to that. And then lastly, I'll say, is whenever possible, if you know it's going to snow, park your car in a spot that's most convenient. You may not park there all the time. Like, for instance, if you want to, if you have a snow plow guy that comes by, clear the driveway. You know, put your vehicle up on the grass just for that one day. Not a big deal. Or, like in my case here, I like to pull way off to the side. So that if I did need to get the snow blower in here, I don't have to negotiate between my vehicle and this curb section over here. And the other piece about it is I put it up further this way because it's going to get the sun once the sun comes out. I could have easily parked it over here. It's going to be in the shade. It's going to be in my way. It's going to be a pain in the butt. Here, a little strategic thinking ahead of time. We're good. Many towns or municipalities offer free salted sand. Um, my town does. So what I do is I have, you know, I got one, two, three, four, five, um, there might be something in that little one there, but I got a good, uh, call it three, three or four buckets of this stuff and I replenish it. You know, I'll go through a bucket, uh, maybe a bucket and a half every, every snowstorm, uh, simply because I got the hill and I got different walkways that, uh, don't get the sun. So I use that. And, uh, so that's another tip. Check with your local town municipality, see if they have free sand and salt mix okay i think we're done here for now uh the snow is, in effect has stopped i hope the sun will come out soon i got the majority of it up got the sand down so we're ready to move on all right everybody that's the video for today um lacy and i want to wish you a merry christmas it's a uh, christmas eve and uh, I wanted to just do a quick video out there to say hello and show you the snow that we had. So I uh, hope you're having a great day. And until next time, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you later. Bye.